Come over here. Ooh, Ooh, okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hi, Wes. Uh, that's a little better. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. We're waiting for our kids to arrive. It's still early. How are you guys? We're good. So we have, um, let me just make sure we have everything. So we have paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need a cereal bowl, Elle. Like, um, let's get a plastic bowl, I think. So, um, so the one we're using, Jen, is like this, and then we are just lining it with a plastic bag. Um, okay, so like this will work, right? Yep. Okay. I mean, you can use any size of Hi guys. the bowl, the bigger your nest will be. Good morning, Cora. Good morning, Cami and Marin. Um, I'm going to add a banner to our page that's going to give some instructions on how to get your eggs boiled. So. This recipe you can make with six eggs. I'm going to use um, half of that. Um, you can use as much or as little eggs as you want, and we're can going to do go a lot. Ahead. I love. Eggs. You know, I'm going to save some of our eggs because if we use them, I know we'll have six. Because six halves. So we're putting our water into our pot right now. Okay, and we're going to cover our eggs with water. Bring them to a boil. And then once they come to a boil, you turn off the heat and you cover your pot for 12 minutes. I like it. Yeah, they are kind of different colors, aren't they? Well, will you go to the comments and see who we got there? Uh, we got Marin. Uh-huh. And Marin. And Any Marin. other comments? No. Um, put a comment in if you're here letting us know. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do a full dozen over here because I'm going to make egg salad. We're getting kind of sick of the lunches we've been having. So we're gonna Right Got it. And I'm going to switch to a smaller pot just so I have um, less water. Yeah, you know, we can save that and something else later. So why don't you put it over here on the counter? Oh, Aunt Liz is here. Oh, Liz. Let me put these back in. This is too small. All right, so let everybody know what we're doing now. We're gonna make hard boiled eggs. So we're making hard boiled eggs so we can make deviled eggs. I'm sure one of yes. my favorite foods. Really All right, hi Aunt Liz, how are you? So we're gonna go ahead and um, get our eggs going. So we have our water starting to boil. All right, so you can turn it all the way up to high. Yeah. Leave it uncovered and let it come to a boil. Yep, you can. Yeah, I think you could cover it or uncover it, but you want it to come to a boil. Okay. Once your eggs come to a boil, um, or once the water comes to a boil, you turn off the heat, you cover your pot, and let it sit for 12 minutes. Does it make any difference if you leave it on the burner, or should you like remove it from the burner and let I think it sit? You can leave it on the burner. Okay. Um, does anybody have any other? Um, ways that they make their deviled eggs, or well, not deviled eggs, but just hard boiled eggs is what I meant to say. Oh, right. Like, it seems like there are some tried and true methods that once you yeah. learn it, you do it that way because it works for you. That's um, right. I was just going to say, as we were putting them on, Wes said, can we make bouncy eggs, which is another really fun science experiment. If you do have a spare egg that you don't mind kind of wasting because you don't eat it afterwards, if you put an egg, a raw egg in the shell in vinegar, which mm -hmm. um, we were using yesterday to make pickles, if you have extra, and you just cover the egg with vinegar and you leave it for 24 hours, that some sort of chemical reaction occurs with the shell and it strengthens the membrane of the egg and you can actually like bounce it. it yeah. Well, Ella just learned about this because that was her science experiment last week. Oh, cool. Um, mm -hmm. And she, I believe it had something, she's going to come back in a moment. I believe it had something to do with osmosis. Right, Al? And you want to explain what happened yeah. when you put your eggs in the vinegar? When I put my egg in the vinegar, the egg got like, on the first day, I was like, oh, cool. It was just like an egg. And it, it looked like it had a crack in it. Like, oh, no, that's not good. But then a couple of days later, I uh, put it back in, and I, you have to rub it, and the shell starts coming off. Unfortunately, I had to finish 
that uh, experiment early because I had strep, so I couldn't touch <laughs> the egg and make it. So then I tried to pick it up to do the next part, which is put it in the corn syrup. And then wow. I tried to pick it up and it pops. <laughs> so it pops. So the vinegar dissolves the, the shell and leaves the membrane. Okay. Yeah. And it also absorbs through osmosis, it absorbs some of the liquid. So I also wanted to show you while we're waiting for other people to join and while everybody's getting their eggs going. So again, we're putting eggs in a pot, we're covering them with water, just covering them. And then we're going to turn off, uh, we're gonna bring it to a boil. When it comes to a boil, you turn off the heat and cover your pot for 12 minutes. And then we'll get started on our activity. But I also wanted to share one more thing, which was how to tell if your eggs are fresh. Um, and so what you can do, and I think, I thought I had um, some eggs that were about a week old, but I actually have farm fresh eggs, luckily for me, the Stone Acres farm. Um, I was able to pick up some eggs yesterday. Um, if you put an egg in water and it sinks to the bottom, your egg is very fresh. Oh. If it stands upright in the water, like, um, ah, Billy's water, sorry, Elle. That's not my fuzzy socks. <laughs> sorry. If it stands kind of upright in the water like this, your mm -hmm. egg might be like a week or so old. And if it floats, it's a pretty old egg. Huh. And um, the reason why is that as your eggs age, the membrane that we were just talking about that's on the inside that's attached to the shell at the very beginning when it's full laid, um, it's still attached. And as the egg ages, the membrane starts to separate from the shell. And that space between the membrane and the shell creates some air pockets and it makes it buoyant. And that's how you can tell your eggs are a little bit older. And it's also why when you're hard boiling eggs, the older the egg is, the easier it is to peel because the shell is not attached to that membrane anymore. Ah, so it's really fresh, which means I may have a little bit of a hard time peeling my egg, but um, but if your eggs are a couple days old um, or a week old, or if they're standing upright, you're gonna have an easier time peeling your egg. Right, okay. Oh, that's interesting, good to know. Yeah. So does, everybody, does everybody have their eggs on the, um, on the stove and ready to go? Ours are going to take a little while to get up to heat because we have a big pot with a full dozen. So that. Oh, okay. All right. Great. So we'll post the recipe and we'll also post the instructions as we go along so that you can look back on the video and see the, um, see how to make the deviled eggs in case your eggs aren't ready when we're ready to, to, to demonstrate. So while the eggs are cooking and coming up to a boil, Lauren's going to show us a craft and I was, I have to share. For some reason, I had zero glue in the house. Uh, well, that's not true. I want you to <laughs> but I didn't have any glue, and so I just made some glue on the stove. I mixed flour and water, and it said to heat it up on the stove. And so now we have some homemade. Can glue. I use this glue? I think it will work. Maybe. I'm impressed, Jen. That's a whole new level of craftiness, making your own crafts. Yeah, I know. Okay. So, oh, okay. So Katie's are already boiled. So Katie, we're going to go ahead and do the craft, and then we're going to come back um, to doing the deviled eggs at the end. So they can really cool down too, because you know you're going to be handling them, especially if you have little ones. So it's probably a good idea to let the eggs cool a little bit or put them in an ice bath. Yeah, and what I'm going to do too, Laura, is I'm going to try to get rid of your head is covered by our logo. No, I can't seem to like navigate that. Maybe if we switch. Let's see if I can. Nope, that's not I it. Don't, I don't think I can get rid of the logo altogether. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Now, oh, oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right, I'm going to get rid of the banner so we can. Get rid of it. Right, isn't that weird? And like. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like a mirror. Yeah. Okay, so this is a craft that we actually did last spring, and I loved how easy it was um, to do with little ones. Wes was only three last year, and came, we thought it came out cool and um, was nice and spring-like, so we knew it again this year, and especially since we were cooking with it today, we thought it would make sense to make these beautiful paper nests. Um, so... For this craft, you need, as Jen said, paper. We have some scrap construction paper. It's a good craft for using up. <laughs> oh, hello, kitty. What is it about cats? They ignore you all day long until you're doing something, especially on the computer. 
and then okay. So scrap construction paper, but any kind of paper that you have on hand will work. Um, and a cereal bowl. This is the size that we use, but if you have a larger bowl, that's fine. You'll just have a larger nest or a smaller one. Um, you can line it with plastic wrap, but we didn't have any, so I just used a plastic bag, and that worked really well. That just protects the bowl from the glue. And then um, any kind of glue will work. Elmer's Spool Glue. We actually have Mod Pods, which is what we used yesterday and what we're going to use today. Um, or if you're like Jen and want to make your own paste out of flour and water, that should work as well. Um, so the first step is to just start cutting lots of uh, strips of paper. So depending on the size of your bowl, you want them to be long enough that they would sort of stretch across the bowl so that you could have it extending beyond the sides of the bowl, oh, ideally on both sides. So I'm going to start this way and just cutting the paper sort of lengthwise. And I like these really thin strips. I like the way that looks. Um, less is going to help me. And so if you're working with little ones and their strips are a bit thicker, so I think the sort of imperfection of the nest is what makes it look really beautiful and sort of natural because birds aren't stressed about symmetry and making everything perfect. Awesome. Okay, so my um, my eggs are boiling now. My water is boiling. So I'm going to turn off my heat, cover my pot, and let it sit for 12 minutes. So we'll be ready at 11.22. Kind of, yeah. Can you? What about you? Thank you. Can you cut paper and do it sort of the long way like this? Into almost like another scissor? Okay. So you can do any color. Yesterday, Wes went with a blue, white, and yellow motif. Today, we're doing more pastels to look kind of green. Yeah, so I'm doing, I think I'm going to do like yellow, pink, and blue. I so a traditional brown. Yeah. I know. Well, it's going to look like a real, like a, a nest that you would find outside. You should put it in the tree and see if birds will come and use it. Yeah. Is anybody else crafting with us? All my making it a nest? Let us know what color you're using. And send us pictures when it's done. Um, they, it just really surprises me by how beautifully they come out. Um, and like I said, it's something that kids of almost any age can do. Even uh, Margo, who is two, can help to paint on the glue, can help stick the um, strips in, which we're going to do in just a minute. So, Wes, can you help me cut some long strips of paper, maybe some of the pink? No. Okay. Um, Laura, um, Lydia has written from home that they like your story to map. Oh, thank you. And yeah. they have the same one. And they also think your cat is cute. Oh. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm curious, what your, what, can you share your cat's name? Yes, Wes, what's, what's, what's our cat's name? Tuna. Tuna. <laughs> yeah. Tuna the cat. And he, he is really cute, which is a good thing because he's also like, we, we say he's a lemon. He's kind of a lemon cat because he has a lot of uh, personality traits, like a lot of anxiety. Um, he likes to curl up on the rug. And guys, guess what happened this week? He brought a live mouse onto our bed at three o'clock in the morning. That's right. Yeah. Of course he did. Yeah. So, I mean, he was trying to help us. He defended our home. You probably don't have a lot of mice in your house unless. Oh, my God. So, um, that was exciting. <laughs> so, Tuna's kind of on my list these days, but he is cute. Oh my goodness. How old is Tuna? Tuna is seven. Aww. And from what I understand, that is only like middle age for a cat. So he's going to be bringing mice into my bed for many years to come. So um, we're making um, birds' nests um, and, um, and some eggs. So obviously, um, birds lay eggs, right? Um, the eggs we have are from chickens. Um, we are. Um, you could be from ostriches, so you know. Well, you can have ostrich eggs, but our my. Eggs but what are, if they have ostrich oh, eggs? Oh, other people. I'm saying our eggs today that we're cooking. Do so anybody have other kinds of eggs that they're cooking today besides chicken eggs? We're just doing chicken eggs. I think um, do Oh, hi, Sue. It's so nice to see you on here. Thanks, Aunt Liz, for sharing this information. Thanks, Sue. 
Sue is one of Aunt Liz's friends. Um, we met her at your cousin's. Wow. Um, my pot mostly. I'm gonna go. Oh, I, got I got three yeah. hot chocolates. And she's a neighbor, and so there, and she's a kindergarten UPK teacher. Yeah, so so folks who are out there, um, Yellow Farmhouse Education Center, for those of you who are new to us, is a um we are an education organization that's located on a farm called Stone Acres Farm in Stonington, Connecticut. And we are uh we do cooking and um farm-based education both at the uh, center and also um, at schools. And um, we are always looking at ways that we can connect what we're doing in our cooking lessons to what's happening outside, whether it's seasonal change or something about nature. And um, uh, we, are, we are now obviously moving to a digital format, at least for the time being. And so we have these classes every day at 11, but we're also starting to work on some digital resources for teachers to use with their students. So please let us know if there's lessons in particular that would be helpful for you. We work a lot with high school culinary teachers um, and we do a lot of work um, that looks at like where your food comes from, our food chain, um, sustainability. And um, but we also do work with, um, oh, hey, Lucas and Claire. Um, we also work with um, social studies curriculum, health curriculum. And so we are, um, are are quickly trying to put together some resources, some videos. We have um, the opportunity to, to um, live stream with some amazing farmers, like Help Farmer Locally, who we love, um, who has a, a company called Stonington Kelp Company. So um, please reach out if there's um, anything in particular that you are looking to, um, uh, to, to hear from or to have available for you as you start to work digitally with your teacher, with your students. Um, okay, so for those who are just joining us, uh, as a reminder, our eggs are um, on the stovetop. They were uh, the water, they put eggs in a pot, covered them with water, brought them to a boil, and now they're sitting for about 12 minutes um, covered um, so that they get nice and hard boiled. And the longer you let them sit, the harder the, um, the, harder the yolk will be. Okay. And now we were working on our strips. So Laura, I have all of my strips. We got our paper to strip, and now we are doing what? Okay, so we have um, sort of strips of either all one color or multicolor. Just, just wait a minute. I'm gonna be right with you. Monstro these days. Just a second. Um, okay, so we're gonna start gluing the or pasting the strips into the bowl. So the the bowl is sort of serving as a form or like a mold. So you can um, start with your glue. Oh yeah, mama. Nice. I like those colors together. And um, you can do this a couple different ways. You can kind of make a little puddle of glue on the uh, piece of paper or in another bowl if that's easier. Or you can just kind of dip your we're using a paintbrush. Um, you could use your fingers as well. Dip your paintbrush in to get some paint, um, glue on your strip, and then lay the strip inside the bowl. It's so you're for you, kind of Mama. Thanks, honey. Put it right there, and I can look at it when I'm finished. Um, so you're gonna lay it inside the bowl. So it kind of um, you're creating a bowl at the. How do I describe this? Um, a base at the bottom of the bowl, so that you end up with this like. Yeah, and so. You brush into that piece and then put another piece in. Is that how you do it? Exactly. So you're kind of crisscrossing them. So I'm going to um, kind of paint the glue onto the bottom of the bowl and the strip will stick to it. And then the ends are not glued. They're just loose over the edge. Oh, we got, we got a spill over here. It's okay. I'm going to grab some paper towels. Um, for once I've done one, I'm going to kind of overlap and do another one and then take some glue and paint it on to get it to stick to the bottom of the bowl. Okay. okay. And then take another one and kind of crisscross it so that I'm starting to create, let's say, like, a, like yeah, the bowl. bottom okay. of the bowl. Is this actually and then I just keep adding to that. And the edges can kind of come over the edge of the bowl in any length that you like. So if you like right. them wacky and funky, you can leave them long or you can trim them. Hang on, I'm just gonna grab a paper towel for this. Paper. Yeah, do you bring the first one down? No, you just put the first one down. And so, as uh, for those of you also just joining me, I did not have um, glue somehow, except for the spray glue, which Elle is gonna try it with. Um, I don't know how I don't have glue. I think I probably brought it all to the farmhouse for some of the crap that we did. A lot of my stuff ends up there. 
Um, and so I, um, I just mixed together some flour and water and it said to just heat it up on the stove and we will see how this works. I mean, I, I have to think that's sort of similar to like paper mache. I think I remember doing that in elementary school with like a, um, okay. So yeah, so I'm just doing one strip at a time. It's okay, Wes, we'll clean it up when we're done. Um, so once you get it going, then it becomes even easier because the strips will stick to the ones that are already there. Okay. Lay that in the bottom and then sort of paint some glue on and then take another color. And you're just kind of eventually working to fill out a round shape. Okay. Oh, Tuna's back. He wants and a little Laura, we have a question from Marin. She's wondering whether we can paint the plastic. Do you guys mean like, um, can, so you are it's gonna come off eventually, right? Yes, so the um, glue will not stick to the plastic. So you're using the bowl as a mold to create this bowl or mess shape. Um, and it takes, I think it took us about six hours for the glue to dry, um, but the directions I read online said, you know, it can take up to a day for it to fully dry. But then once it is dry and it's hardened, like this, you know, is hard now, you can just peel the plastic right off. It will, the glue will not stick to the plastic bag or to the um, plastic wrap that you're yeah. using. So you can, if the glue gets on the plastic, it's not a big deal. Nope, and it will, it will have to. Um, yeah. I don't think there's any way to avoid that. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it's okay. It's no big deal. It's just glue. It washes off. It's okay, Laura. So I can keep going here. I'll, I'm going to ask you to not do that spray because you know what? It's getting all over the um, kitchen. So you're going to use this from now on. Okay. The spray glue is not working super well because it's. Yeah, it does. It works. It's keeping it. It's keeping it stuck down. Yeah. Maybe that's a quicker way to get it dry. Yours is probably going to be done faster. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to keep going here for just another minute, and then my eggs are just about ready. How's everybody else's eggs doing? Laura, yours are probably still going, right? Yeah, I think I have like eight minutes or so left. Okay. So I will go ahead. What I'll start to do is um, get going on the um, recipe for the deviled eggs. Um, in just a moment, I'll get myself set up for that. And um, we'll do the recipe and I will post a link to the recipe that um, we're using. It's just a really simple recipe, but I'll also put the um, steps in our um, in this feed as we go along as a banner. And that way you can all, um, you know, rewind and watch this if that if that's helpful. All right. I think mine is almost done. I have like one more piece to put in. How's everybody else doing on their nests? Right. So this can, you know, it can take really as long as you want. If you want it really filled in, you can keep adding to it. Um, or if you, just as long as you have a base that's pretty full, then the rest of it can look however you like. Um, because ultimately you want it to be enough of a bowl that um, you could put like some Easter candies in it. Or um, yesterday we were making eggs out of Play-Doh and Wes oh, had like um, each burying something inside the Play-Doh as a surprise egg for each other. So like a Lego guy or a bead or something. And then we would get to open the eggs and find out what was inside. So that's an extension for those of you who like surprise eggs in your house like we do. I love that idea, Laura. I'm absolutely going to do this. I'm going to have um, Max Wong and uh, Cole, my two sons, are outside playing right now, taking advantage of the sunshine that came out. Yesterday was a little tricky where there was no sun. Mm -hmm. uh, they're outside right now, but when they come in, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing this with them this afternoon. And I love the idea of filling your play-doh with um filling your play-doh with some surprises for people yeah. to see. I think that's awesome. And last year we had them as like um Easter centerpieces. So we okay. made them and then put like chocolate eggs or those Cadbury eggs, those beautiful like speckled Cadbury eggs, and that yeah. looks really nice on the Easter table. So, yeah. yeah, you may not be doing much entertaining this year at Easter, but even for your own family, just to make the table look really pretty, and then the kids have done something to contribute. I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna set mine aside. My eggs are just about done. How does yours look so good? Wait, it just looks like it's just brown. Mine is not good. I'll tell you, it's the glue. You want to use that glue. Why? No, this glue's fine. All right, so I'm going to so clear out my table, and I'm going to move it over to the side, um, and I'm going to get my eggs going and give you some tri tricks on, um, on peeling eggs. And I would love to hear, again, anybody who has different ways that they um, – that they um, 
Oh, here I'm seeing, oh, Liz, Liz O'Rourke, thank you. So helpful hint you learned from someone. Um, after you drain the eggs, you can cool down with cold water or an ice drain, um, and that will help to peel them. So that's actually what I'm gonna do because I wanna use mine right away and they're gonna be a little bit hot. So normally I would make my hard boiled eggs and then I would let them cool a little bit and then I would go to, um, to peeling them. But I think we're gonna just kind of get them going. So I'm gonna go get my eggs out of the pot. I am gonna drain them and cool them with water. And then I'm gonna show some tips on how to um, on how to peel them. So Laura, anything else you wanna share? I'll let you guys kind of keep crafting. There's Ella. Yeah, so we're just sort of up just me now because Les has created his own free form art, put paper and paste out, you know, it's kind of irresistible. And glue. <laughs> right, and glue. So we'll, um, we're going to keep going, and mine is looking pretty full, but I want to um, flush it out a little bit so that I have a bowl that I can actually use as a bowl. Um, so I think it's kind of relaxing to just keep adding and seeing how it um, comes together. Yeah, Ella, let me see yours. Can you hold it up to the camera? Lovely. Yeah, see, it's, I think it's kind of fun, and um, you can't mess it up. That's another thing that's nice about it is... There's no one right way um, with like mix of colors, mix of like different um, widths of the strip. And each one is gonna be unique. Would you like to try? Uh, a good thing for practicing cutting skills. So Wes is for working on learning how to use scissors. So the preschool and kindergartners need practice with that. And this gives you a ton of practice. So you can just cut strips for as long as they'll sit there and do it. Um, and then you can make a bunch of bowls, like I said, that you can use as like a, a centerpiece or something like that for Easter, if you sell I love them. that. Well, maybe we'll make a whole bunch of these, though. We should make them with the boys later. We'll make them with the boys later. Okay, so peeling eggs. So um, I see Katie mentioned that she um, crumbles bacon on top of her deviled eggs, which I think sounds amazing. I've also done deviled eggs uh, for St. Patrick's Day, which is past, but um, also I guess you could do it for Easter too with um, avocado. You can mix in avocado with your um, with your mixture and it makes green eggs, which is super fun. Um, okay, so tips on peeling eggs. Um, the older your egg is, the easier it is gonna be to peel. Um, mine are pretty fresh, so they might be a little tricky. Um, but what we suggest to kids when we do peeling eggs is we have them, um, we have them um, get a little crack going so you have a little bit of a crack. And then you kind of roll it, you kind of push down until you hear crackling. Can everybody hear that? And you get it cracked all the way around. You want to go get a, um, a plate and do an egg? Sure, I'm gonna connect the Yeah, I said. Okay, we're gonna crack all the way around. So you kind of can roll it gently. So Jen, quick question. So you took your eggs after they had um after they sat for they're in the sink, honey. Um after they sit for 12 minutes, then you just ran them under cool water to cool down a little bit. Yeah, and I have them in an ice bath just to keep them going. This this first one might be a little warm because it wasn't very long in ice bath. All just right, cold just to get them cold, which um which we hear that uh, could potentially help with um one uh, with peeling them. But um what what uh, my aunt Liz was saying is that you could also keep them in um the pot with cold water and sort of shake it a little bit and it'll help it um to, to peel them as well. Okay. Right here. So my eggs were super fresh, <clears throat> but <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to carefully peel them. And when they're fresh, what happens is the um, the the membrane right on the inside of the egg is still attached to the shell. And that's what makes it so hard to peel. As an egg ages, the membrane starts to separate from the shell, this, this sort of membrane right here. And that's what makes it easier to peel is that white membrane is separate from the rest of the egg. I'm peeling my eggs and I'm, I'm having a little bit of a struggle because my membrane on my egg is really close to it. Did you get a crack on yours? The thing is, even if it's a little bit, it doesn't matter. You can make egg salad instead of, um, 
instead of deviled eggs or yeah. <laughs> you can just kind of piece it all together and it may not be the prettiest deviled eggs you've ever seen but they're still going to be delicious yeah, awesome. I'm going to head to peel my egg um, and I see that um, Julia mentioned that they always add pickles to their egg mixture, which I think sounds delicious also. Um, I sometimes add uh, chopped capers, which I really like. Ooh, yeah. Capers are berries actually from a caper tree. Or not berries, buds. They're actually uh, little buds. Are those those tree. tiny circular green things? Yes, those little circle oh, green things. Those. Yeah. Buds like, oh. like they're a flower bud, Jim? Yes, or, or maybe a, a leaf bud, Capers. I think. Well, no, sorry, caper berries are different than capers. So caper berries actually have, you can buy those. Those are actually have seeds inside of them. And then capers, I believe, are little buds. Oh, okay. okay. And then um, this past year, um, when I was growing nasturtium, if anybody grows nasturtium, I discovered all the little seeds on the bottom. Of course, this is not a, like a major discovery, but they have two seeds per flower. And those are what you could save and grow and plant the next year. Um, and then um, and then when you, um, but I was harvesting them fresh and, and pickling them and they made almost like pretend capers. They were kind of delicious. Um, oh, okay, so Liz said, uh, just to clarify, so you drain the eggs before you shake the pan. Okay, so you, you rinse the eggs you with cold water and then you take drain all the water out keep the lid on the pan and shake it gently and that will help to to get the um shells cracked oh okay so that's a good tip all right my egg Can is almost egg? you want to do the last one you can just be um peel and so you can see there's that membrane that i was talking about so for me mine is still attached and that's making it a little harder to peel but it's gonna work. Oh, the gray layer around the yolk usually means um, it has to do with how you um, how long you um, hard boiled them for. Um, so if you don't if you overcook them, you'll get a gray layer around the the uh, yolk, and it's totally fine to eat. It's just it's just the way it looks, but it has nothing to do with um, whether it's good to eat or not. It'll taste the same. It just means that you've cooked them a little bit longer. Um, than you might have needed to, uh, or that you didn't, um, I think it might also have to do with like whether they're removed from the water right away, but it happens. It's oh, nicely done, Ella. Uh, we can actually rinse our eggs in this water again just to get the last bits of the shell off. Okay. Where should I put all the shells? Um, you wanna move them just to the side there? All right, so Ella's gonna get to work on our last egg. My egg. That's a hard shell. Let me get it going on here. Sometimes. No, I got it. Okay. There you go. Oh, okay. All right. So we've got two eggs down. How's everybody doing with their peeling? Oh, dill is good. Yes. <laughs> she's right. So my Aunt Liz is my mom's sister, and she's absolutely right that dill is a go to for my mom, and it is delicious. Ooh, yeah. I actually think I have some dried dill in the pantry, so that might work well. Oh, I bet that would be delicious. Yeah, this part came oh, yeah. okay. Well, try to you see you cracked it a little too hard. Yeah. So if you crack it too hard, if you if you crack it too hard, you're gonna get some breaks in it. But like I said, Elle, it's okay. We're just gonna try to get around it and it. Just it's, not have. it's okay if it's not pretty. Do you want me to keep doing it or you yeah. wanna keep doing it? All right, so I'm gonna peel the last egg here. And it is hard. So you want to be pretty gentle with them. But I will tell you that we, Laura and I have done egg peeling with so many classes at the farm, uh, kindergarten in particular and preschool. And if you are looking for something to keep your little ones busy, I don't know. I find that their attention span is like doubled once they, uh, once they start peeling eggs. Oh, here we go. And is there nothing more satisfying than getting one part of the peel and taking off no. a whole section cleanly? I don't know. I think that might be one of the more satisfying things you can do. Do you want to go rinse your hands so that you don't have eggshells on them? Yes. To get to crack. <laughs> they are fun to crack. And we can save our eggshells and add them to our gardens. Why to the garden? I'm going to add nutrients back into the soil. Eggshells are good for your garden. Then I should break them up. 
you can break them up for me and we'll use them and we'll scatter them. Right. Oh, so you just add them directly into the soil? You don't have to compost no. them? I don't. I mean, you can compost them, but I think you can also crack them up really small and add them. Oh, okay. Like powder. You put okay. So, yes, Cora, I agree. She, so Cora mentioned that it's super satisfying to get a shell peeled and have it all come off at once. I totally agree. Okay, I have my handy mezzaluna ready again. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna cut our eggs. Okay, let me cut the first one. And you're gonna wanna cut, um, you see there's the egg top to bottom like this or lengthwise like this. We're gonna make it lengthwise. And we're just gonna cut our egg as cleanly as we can right down the middle. That egg's not that bad actually. No, it looks all right. Can you do this one? And the next thing we're gonna do is scoop our yolks into a small bowl. Try to get the yolk out without the white part. And it should pop right out. Okay, so let's keep this. Are you gonna try the next one? Sure. All right, so our eggs are a little bit messy, but that is okay. Yeah, we're not afraid of that over here. So this way, right? Now. Yeah. Straight down. Yep. Nice and clean cut. Perfect. After scooping. Beautiful. Nice I'm going to scoop the yolks into this bowl right here. And I'm going to take back our Aww. eggs. There's like a so super gentle. Yeah, I'm that's why I Mm -hmm. this yeah go. that's perfect and so we'll put that on the plate here yeah. <laughs> i know you so uh lydia says that they can tell um that the eggs are from stone acres because they're so bright and yellow and they are they're like glowing yellow they're just gorgeous <laughs> eggs we've got our eggs coming our egg uh yolk dang it that part came that's okay. i'll cut this one this was mine I'll make it on both halves. Okay. Well, we're little messy. Filling. Do you want to help me with that? And we can just kind of pop those out. No. Well, there's still one more over here to peel. Well, I just did three eggs. Um, the recipe that we're using calls for six eggs. And the little math for those of you out there, if you're using six eggs and you're cutting them in half, how many halves do you end up having? You can go eat that and you can go rinse your hands and okay. eat that and rinse your hands. Um, if you are cutting six eggs in half, how many do you end up having? Hmm. Plus, can you think about that? Can I do it? Six plus sixes? Nine? Mm, don't guess. Put your fingers in half to do. Let's see. So we have six and six. So can you show me six on your fingers? Six. So it's one whole hand plus one. Okay. And then I'll use six. Six. So now we'll count. We'll go one at a time. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Good. And Marin's group got it as well. Awesome. Good job, Wes. Nice counting. Okay. Why don't you go reach your hand? We'll come back. Okay. We're gonna move this out of the way. And now we have our bowl. And again, I've, I've learned a couple quick lessons about <laughs> cooking on, on TV that a glass bowl works really well. So we've got our eggs. And like I said, I ended up only using three eggs um, instead of six. So I'm gonna have my recipe. Um, but let me see if I can do my um, banners. So the first thing you're gonna add to your, um, to your um, eggs is a quarter if you have six eggs you're going to use um so six uh yolks hard boiled i'm going to write this on here we're going to add um a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise i should have done this in advance i'm learning as i go um a teaspoon of dijon but if you dijon. have a dijon mustard you'll like it in here mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Um, but if you have another kind of mustard, that's fine. And then the last thing is you can add some cayenne, um, herbs or spices as desired. So I'm going to put this up here so we have it. Herbs or spices as desired. Um, and that's not spelled properly. And let me go ahead and add this banner. And we're going to show that. Okay, so six yolks hard boiled, a quarter cup of mayo, a teaspoon of Dijon, um, and herbs or spices as desired. So we only have three, Ella. So a, a quarter of a cup of um, a quarter of a cup of mayo would be four tablespoons. So one quarter of a cup is about four tablespoons. So if we're having that, how many tablespoons do we need? Two. We only need two. Actually, Ella has not lost a step. I, in this I, disruption. Can so can you just do a little nap? And then we need a teaspoon of Dijon, but since we're using, I, um, have, I have another mayo ready to go. Uh, since we're gonna have it, we're gonna do like a half a teaspoon. Yep, yeah. so go ahead and add that. Yeah, there's a spoon right here. Yeah, I need to scoop it Okay, and we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of Dijon. And then the last thing that you need to do, I think it's probably good. That's only, that's only one. I didn't need to. Okay, well, let's start to smush it together. So can the next say, thing we do wait, can you help me with is, yes, I can move a little bit, is we start to, uh, we start to mash it. So we're just gonna start mashing ours. But Elle, I'm gonna wait actually because I, some, and this is where it's like a little bit personal um, taste as well. I love the mayo. You want more mayo? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I may add a little, you could add, can we go a little less than that? I may add a little bit less, um, I may add a little bit of paprika to mine. Or maybe <laughs> cayenne you could What's add the thing that if you like a little spice. Top. I like the thing that you could Oh, that's the paprika. Yeah, like a lot that. of times people sprinkle, um, the top of their the eggs stuff. with paprika, yeah. And you just kind of smush it and stir, and smush it and stir. Can I taste Let this see. Good? Yeah. Oh, okay, Amy, so I actually posted, um, I have somebody who just joined. Um, we posted the um, steps for boiling your eggs, and then right now you can see what you need for making the filling, but I'm also gonna post a link in the comments to the very easy recipe that we use. And then there's a lot of adaptation that you can use on your own as well. And also, uh, Laura taught us how to make these, and they're really easy. So all you need is a bowl. <laughs> we'll come. Wrapping this paper. Construction saran, paper and, and saran. construction paper. Yeah, and some glue. Yes. Yeah. All right. And so you just want to kind of smush it until it's um, all stirred up and all smooth. Okay. And Al, you want to take a little taste and see. You can add some salt and pepper if you want to. Mayo and salt and pepper. A little mayo and some salt and pepper. Okay, why don't you add like a half a tablespoon of mayo, not too much. And we're gonna, a, yeah, and we're gonna add a little salt and pepper to ours. How's everybody doing there? We're good. I think I'm gonna leave it pretty plain because I'm hoping my kids will um, try this for lunch. So if I was making it just for myself, I absolutely would add more seasoning, but I think we're gonna leave it very basic and just do the mayo and mustard. Um, okay. Wes will help me with this stuff as we start to fill them. Okay, so then once you've, you've uh, sure, let's do it on the other side of the spoon. Okay, so we're gonna do the mustard. Okay, and then we're gonna add your own pepper, because <laughs> Ella loves pepper. Um, so once you've gotten to this stage, you have a couple of choices. You can use a spoon and stir it in, um, but we are going to, and I'm going to get rid of the banner now for a second, just so you, it's easier to see. Um, let me hide this banner and we can put it back up again later. Um, we are going to use a um, plastic bag, just like this. And we are going to spoon our filling into our plastic bag. Oh, ground mustard, does that work? Oh yes, ground mustard would work. Yeah, it just it adds a little bit of that flavor. Um, the mustardy flavor would be delicious. And this is again one of those recipes that you can kind of um, so that you can adapt to your own personal. 
Yeah, can you, um, I guess we can use that spoon with it that we use for the eggs, right? Or the mayo spoon, either the one. The mayo spoon. <laughs> oh, well, I love the mayonnaise. I didn't realize you liked mayonnaise so much. I don't know, I, I like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we heard that Lydia tried mayo for the first time today and she liked it. It's good. It's good. I'm a fan of, I like mayonnaise. This is like the first time I've actually liked Oh, maybe we'll try to make mayonnaise one of these days, actually. We used to make, um. You used to want to start a mayonnaise. I was going to start a mayonnaise company and I was trying to make all kinds of mayonnaise. And then I, and then for a little while I did not like mayonnaise. And so I stopped doing that. Okay. So you get your bag filled with your filling just like this and you kind of squeeze it if you can into one corner of your I bag. I these with someone when we went somewhere, but I don't know where. You don't remember? No, I made these with someone because I was really bored. It was like a party. And then we're gonna cut the end off of our bag. Just to, just to like, I don't know, so that it's like a, maybe a half an inch to three quarters of an inch opening. Can I pour it in the thing? Yeah, my scissors are not working super well. Okay, there we go. So we've just cut the ends off, okay? And again, you can spoon your filling into your eggs. That's totally fine if you don't have a bag and you don't wanna do this. But I'm gonna do one, L, and then will you do okay. the rest? Okay. And so. You do like the works one so I can. You're gonna take your one. egg and your filling and you're just gonna kinda of like squeeze it in. Squeeze it like a cupcake. Now watch. Just like that. I'll do one more. I think you get a prettier presentation that way. <laughs> it comes out kind of pretty. Here, I'll pick up the hard one. I'll do the hard one. Thank you. Okay. And you just squeeze it in like that. I want all of them. Okay. <laughs> I think we should give some to your brothers. No, they don't like this stuff. So do you want to just eat it plain like that? Do you want to cut it open or put a little salt on it? This one's up. Oh, and you want to make sure you have enough for all of them. I put yeah. a little too much in the first one. Then I'm going to grab some paprika to sprinkle on there. Is that your favorite way to have eggs? Hard boiled and plain. Okay. Well, we're learning. We're learning all sorts of things about what our kids like and don't like. I know, right? And I found it for us, it changes. So like it used to be, you would only eat eggs if they were fried with cheese. Now we're off fried eggs, apparently on hard boiled. So you know, cool. You never know. Okay, so if you get to the very end, one of the things that you can do is you can kind of like salvage, salvage the last bits of it and squeeze that last bit out. There we go. How is it? It's a bad you got it, you got it. And it should fill all your eggs up almost exactly right. Um, you can use a, um, this is a, a tea strainer. Do this? Yeah, the tea strainer, because it looks better. Yeah. Oh. And that just makes it um, help distribute your um, spice a little bit, a little bit more evenly. Right, like a little dusting. Like a little one? dusting. Can I eat one? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And Ella's going to do a little taste, and we'll just show you our little plate of deviled eggs. We would love to see your pictures of deviled eggs as well. Laura, yours look delicious. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be a hit. I'm, Margo's we're holding her off in the other room, but we'll let her in and have some fun. Um, and I also would love to see uh, folks' bird's nests, how they come out. So you can send us pictures at info at yellowfarmhouse.org, or you can tag us on Instagram um, or post to Facebook. Because um, I would love to see how they came out and what other ideas you come up with for how to use them either as like table decor or if you play a little egg surprise game like we were talking about. Um, you know, we've been so impressed by what you guys are coming up with and it gives us new ideas. So we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you again for joining us. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Awesome. If anybody has ideas or something that they would like us to cook with, send it along. What ingredient do you have that you want to use? Um, yeah, something, that, something you might be trying to use up for sure. We, we like that kind of challenge. So let us know. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks. You too. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Wes.